Hello, my name is Pat Allen, and uh, we are here on June the 14th at the Cincinnati Hamilton County Library to uh, conduct a veterans interview of Don Saylor uh, for the Library of Congress, and that is done under the auspices here at the library under the direction of uh, Brian Powers. Uh, Brian is our cameraman today, and we'll probably have some questions uh, for in this interview. So, uh, Mr. Saylor, let me thank you first of all for thank you. Uh, agreeing to do this interview. Thank you. Uh, what, tell us what your full name is. Uh, Donald Galvin Saylor. <laughs> all right, and Donald, where do you live now? I live in <clears throat> Middleton, Ohio. All right. And where were you born and when? I was born in Middleton, Ohio on 04, 23, 25. All right. And uh, have you been a lifelong resident then of Middletown? Yes, sir. And where did you go to school? I went to school at uh, Jefferson, uh, at Roosevelt, and the Middletown Senior High School. All right. And uh, those, still, those uh, structures still exist? No, they're all three gone. All right. How about your parents? What were your, what were your parents' names? First of all, your dad. My well, dad's name was Joseph. My right. mother's name was Martha. And. Uh, <clears throat> Where was Joseph from? Where was he born? He was born in uh, Harlan, Kentucky. Harlan, Kentucky? Yes. All right. Do you know when he was born? In 1887. Uh, what month? Uh, May 4th? January, sometime in January. Uh, I see here you put down May, May 4th. Did I? Yeah. I, I guess that's right. Okay. You're right. And your mother, Martha, what was her maiden name? Houndshell. H O U N C H E W -L, L. When was uh, when was your mom born? October the eighteenth, eighteen eighty nine. Right. Is it October or November? October. You've got November down here. <laughs> Let's see that. <laughs> down here. <clears throat> That's right. It's ten instead of eleven. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, when did your mom and dad get married? Let's see. Uh, I was born my uh, my youngest, oldest. Let's see, my oldest brother was being he born in 1910. So I imagine it's around 19, 1908, somewhere right. in there. And uh, where did they get married? Were they in Ohio or in Kentucky? No, in Kentucky. Uh, what kind of uh, livelihood did your dad have? What did he do? Did you... uh, he worked at the paper mill in, uh, in Middletown. He worked at the coal mines in Harlan first. All right. And uh, he got so he didn't like that. And uh, so they uh, moved to Middletown. I think it was in 1913. Okay. Just, in, just to... in time for the flood. Oh. Yes, right. <laughs> That's right. Did he ever talk about the coal mines? Yes, and it had told me that had had mules them days to pull the carts out with, uh -huh. and uh, the mules would be in, in the in the mines so long that they become blind. So when you take them out, they they'd be blind. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, were, were they drift mines back into the mountains, or were they shaft mines down? Those uh, strip mines. Oh, strip mines. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so when, when did he come to Middletown, about what age? Oh, he must have been, let's see, born 1987. You say 1913, maybe? Yeah, around 1913. All right, and, uh, yeah. So your mom and dad were married at that time? Yes. Now how about- They uh, had three children at that well, time. I was gonna ask you how many siblings you had. Well, there was uh, seven total. Seven? Yes. All right. Uh, how many are still living? Just me. You're the only one. I'm seven? the only one. Yes. Uh, do you remember the names of uh, your siblings and yes. how old they were when they died? I see. My uh, oldest brother was uh, born in 1910 and uh, died in 1930. What did he die from? He had a spinal, spinal something wrong with his spine. Okay. And after he finished high school, he, he, it seemed like it got worse and he had. Uh, Send him here in Cincinnati to a hospital and passed away there. Oh. Next? 
And my sister, she was born 1912. And she died in January the 1st, and she was 90 years old. 90, good. Yes, she died in 2002 would be then. What was her la last name? Was she married? Blanton, yeah, her name was Mary, Mary Blanton. All right, and the third one? And the third one was uh, my brother, Frank, Joseph Franklin Sailor. All right. And he was born in 1914. And yeah, 19. when, when did he pass away? He died in 19, 1960, I believe, that's right. All right. Yeah. And the next one? And the next one is my other next sister, Mary uh, Wilma. She was born in 19. 21. And what was Wilma's uh, maiden, uh, married name? Robinson. Robinson. All right. And when did she pass away? Uh, I think it was about 19, let's see. Nineteen eighty, eighteen eighty-five. 1885. All right. And the next one? Uh, let's see, next one would be my brother Fred, Fred Zaylor. And when was he? He was born in 1923, and he died on January the 1st, 1955. Well, he was young, what, what yes. did he pass away from? Uh, let's see, what was it he had? Well, he, uh, he was in a Marine, he was in an army, and he lost his foot in the army. And, uh, oh, heart, heart attack. Heart? Heart attack, yes. Uh, if he was in the Army, would he have been in Korea? Oh, he was in the Philippines, in Philippines. World War II. World War II? Yes. Um, was he drafted or did he enlist? He was drafted. And how, how long was he in? Let's see, he went in in 19, uh, let's see, I went in in 42, 40, he went in in 40, 44. All right. And he had a, a foot lost injury. A leg, lost a leg in the, yeah. Right. Lost and that he, part of his ankle here. Did he ever tell you how he got that? Uh, no, he, he didn't like to talk about it. Okay. So I didn't force it. Uh, and there's one more besides yourself in there. And I had a younger sister. She was oh. born in 1929. Right. And her last name was Hassett. Hassett? Yes. And, she, right. and when did she pass away? She passed away. Uh, uh, about two years ago. All right. So uh, you, you, you've lived uh, right, so you're still uh, vertical and uh, yeah, in good shape. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> well, let's, uh, how about, uh, are you, have you been married? Yes. And uh, are you married now? Is your My wife, wife passed away in 13, 2013. All right. What was her name? Frida Hayes. Frida Hayes. Where was she from? Middletown. When did you and Frida get married? In uh, March of 1949. After you'd been in the service, okay. Uh, did you and Frida have children? Yes, we had three. All right, and what were their names? And uh, Donna, the Donna Joan. All right, when was, Donna, when was Donna born? She was born in 1949. Right. Does, is Donna still living? Yes. And did she have children? Yes. Uh, how many did she have? Two. All right. Uh, and then who's the next one? Uh, Stephen. Uh, with a P-H or a V? S-T-E-P-H. All right. And uh, when was Stephen born? He was born in 52. Is he still living? Yes. All right. And uh, where, is, where does Donna live now? She lives in Indiana. I can't think of the name of it right now. How about uh, Steve? He's living with me. Okay. Uh, and the third one was who? St uh, Thomas Bradley. How, uh, when was uh, Thomas born? He was born in 68. Uh, Where does he live? In uh, Riverside, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, during your marriage, uh, did Frida work outside the home? No, she was a homemaker. And let's talk about uh, when, 
when did you go into the service? Uh, uh, October 21st, 1942. And were, were you drafted or did you enlist? I was a senior in high school and I decided I wanted to go in the Navy and, and I was, had to have my parents' signature, uh, but they didn't want to sign so I uh, kind of bad mouthed them. They signed and I went in. And they, <laughs> so you didn't finish your senior year that year? Not at that time. Well, yeah. All right, uh, when you enlisted, where did, where did you enlist? Was Cincinnati, it's right here in Cincinnati. Okay, and uh, where did you go from Cincinnati? To Great Lakes, Illinois, for boot camp. Uh, what, was the, what was the base called? The what? Naval Air, was that the Naval Air Station, or what was it? No, it was a receiving station. Okay. But, but the Navy receiving station. How long were you there? Three weeks and four days. What did you learn there? Uh, nothing, not too much, because uh, we were busy and uh, they were coming at, at the rate of about 500 a day. And I was in a brand new camp and they only had, uh, they didn't have any hot water. Oh. And uh, mostly just getting our shots and they're doing very little drilling and then you was out of there. Uh, what was your rank at that time? My what? What was your rank? Uh, apprentice seaman. Where did you go from Great Lakes? I went to the University of uh, Northwestern. And what did you do there? Went to radio school. How long were you in radio school at Northwestern? Uh, th three months. Where did you go from the radio school at Northwestern? I went to a receiving station in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what did you learn at the receiving station? Uh, I, was re I was assigned to the USS Calpins, which is being built across the river in uh, New Jersey. All right. And hadn't been finished yet. Were hadn't you still, been commissioned yet. Were you still in radio? No, I was in uh, radar at that time. When did you go to radar? Well, when I got to the receiving station, I was assigned to the Calpins. They come and told me, said, uh, you're going to radar school. I said, no, I just plunked radio. He said, you're going to radar school. I said, oh, okay. Well, tell, tell me about flunking radio school. Well, I got the measles, and about, after about being in for two months, I got the measles, and I was out for two weeks. And uh, when it come time to take the test, I done good on theory, I done good on everything, but code. Sound like when you get up to around 20, 21 minutes, which you have to do get to qualify, you have to get at least 21. It sounds like it to me that holding the key down on me, <laughs> so I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to uh, so I got I got plunked you get out to Philadelphia and, and uh, now yeah. you're in the radar yeah <clears throat> well uh, did you get any time to go home uh, between any of these assignments I got uh, nine days when I left boot camp and went back to went to uh, University of Northwestern okay and then I went to Philadelphia. <clears throat> And uh, how long were you in radar school in Philadelphia? I uh, see. So I didn't. They, they shipped me to uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia, for six weeks of uh, radar training at the uh, Cavalier Hotel. They maybe had taken it over. Uh, you, you said the Calpins. What was the Calpins? USS Calpins. What was that? That's a CVL 25 aircraft carrier. What do, What does CVL mean? Uh, CV, CVS carrier. V is aircraft, L is light. Okay, and you said it was not built yet. Where was that being uh, built? In Gloucester, New Jersey, right across the river from uh, Philadelphia. Were they building others at the same time? Nine of them. Uh, there was a time, at that time, that uh, they was building the hulls for nine cruisers. Uh, President Roosevelt got the thing and he said, no, we don't need the cruisers. Let's convert them to carriers. And that's what they did. All right. So they had a cruiser hull, but a carrier superstructure? Right. right. Oh. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> you, you go to Virginia Beach. Yes. And what are you doing there? I trained for uh, radar, radar operator. How long were you at Virginia Beach? In six training? weeks. Six weeks? Mm hmm. Uh, how many other fellows were undergoing radar training? Let's see, there must have been at least about 20 of us from uh, 
from the, from the carrier. And at that time, you know you're going to the Calpins? Yes, we've already been assigned to the Calpins. Okay. And by the time you finished radar school, had the Calpins been completed? It was completed and uh, commissioned in, in May. All right. So what, what did you do from uh, Virginia Beach? How did you get from schooling over to the aircraft carrier? Uh, by, by railroad, by, by, yeah, caught a train back to Philadelphia. All right. And uh, <clears throat> what kind of accommodations did you yourself have on the cow pens? You mean living quarters? Living quarters. I was down on about, uh, let me see, third deck, third, third deck down from the main deck. And what are you in sleeping a compartment. in? What are you sleeping in? Uh, in a compartment. Okay. Well, about, uh, let's see, there was, uh, I was in the, what they called a V3 division, which, you can, which included radarmen, air aerographers, and photo photographers, and we were all in that same division. And I guess there must have been about a uh, total, maybe around uh, 80 of us. All and right. it was all in that compartment. 80 in that one compartment? Yes. Are we you sleeping the, in bunks? You're sleeping yeah, in hammocks? Bunks, three high. And where were you? I was lucky I got a top bunk for a while, and I uh, didn't like it too well because it was hot. We sure. had no, no air conditioning. So I found one later on over by a vent that brought cool air from the outside, so I moved down to that one. You were walking in tall cotton then. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> How tall are you? How tall am I? Yeah. Uh, I used to be 5'11", but I think I'm about 5'10 now. Oh, you look a little taller than that. Uh, how was the uh, how was the food on the carrier? Very good. We had very good cooks. We had very good cooks. What? Give me an example of some of your meals. Well, we uh, had uh, what they call SOS. Maybe you don't know what that is. I, I've heard of it. Have you heard of it? <laughs> you know what that is then. And they had that was good and uh, uh, just about everything they fixed was good. Pies, all made pastries was all good. How many men were on the Calpins with you? With the air crew, about 1,500. How large was the air crew? Oh, maybe 300. Now, describe for that's, us what you mean by the air crew. That's people other than the pilots, weren't there? Yes, that's your gunners and your radio men that's aboard play, all attached to the air, the air group. All right. And some even uh, mechanics. All right. A few of them mechanics. Um, <clears throat> Where did you go from uh, the... After commissioning? Yeah, after commissioning. We went on a, uh, what they call a shakedown cruise to see if there's anything wrong with the ship or anything like that. Went from there to Trinidad. All right. How long and, were you in Trinidad? And we were in Trinidad about, uh, oh, maybe three weeks. What did you do in Trinidad? Every day we went out and had done exercises, different kind of exercises make sure that everything was running right. And then we went back to uh, Philadelphia after that. Okay, when you say everything is running right, were you? Like on the ball, everything on like guns, guns, and all that stuff. And then right. we learned that the pilots, we had a crew, air crew on board. And were they and practicing takeoffs? They were practicing, yes. Um, I can't imagine trying to take off and land on an aircraft carrier. Did, uh, did you have any heavy seas or any night takeoff and landings? Well, the only the main thing, you, you had to have at least, before you could, uh, could launch aircraft, you had to have at least 25 knots of wind across the deck. So that if you could get up speed enough, and the wind was blowing enough to get 25 knots, you were able to take off, take, launch, launch aircraft. But how about pitching and rolling? No, that, that, that not, didn't, didn't affect it too much then. All right, no. how about, uh, did they practice night landings? We, that's, we practiced night landing after we got into, back, back, got to Pearl Harbor. Okay, well, that's getting ahead of myself. You go from Trinidad back to Philadelphia, yes. what do you do in Philly? Well, uh, we, uh, got, we got to leave, the crew's got to leave, of about, I think it was six or seven days and then reported back. And we uh, took all, all our stores and things that we needed aboard 
and uh, went and headed for the Panama Canal. We were heading for San Diego. When you got your leave, did you come back home? Yeah, I came back home for six, seven days. How did you get home? By a train. Train. Yeah. And from home back to Philly? Back same way. <coughs> and then we uh, left there. A, uh, this is back in 42. Was so that this in 43? 43. Yeah, this was in the, uh, around May of 43. Was that a steam engine? Uh, no, diesel. Diesel? Diesel engines. Uh, okay. Uh, you're going through the Panama Canal. Yes. Did you know where you were going? Yes. Ultimately? Yes. Where did you? Where did we you... were heading for San Diego. All right. Now, how long did it take to get from Philadelphia to San Diego by ship? It Roughly. must have been about a week. Yeah. Yeah, I think about a week. What did you do in San Diego? Well, we uh, pulled in and picked up our air group was there in, in San Diego. All right. So we took them, bring, brought them aboard. Our planes all come aboard. All right. Uh, what kind of planes did you have at that time? We had uh, TBS. What is that? That's a torpedo bomber. All right. And uh, then we had uh, the F-6F, the Hellcat, made by Grumman. All right. About how many aircraft did you have on the carrier? We had approximately 40-some. Uh, uh, and while the, while the uh, carriers traveling, uh, were those planes stored on deck or down below? We had some above and some below, some on the hangar deck and some on the flight deck. How many elevators did you have to get the aircraft? Two, one forward and one aft. <clears throat> How did uh, the sailors get along with the air crew? Very good, very good. They all very good. All right, from San Diego, where did you go? We left San Diego and we picked up uh, the 3rd Marine Division at San Diego, too, and took them to Pearl Harbor with us when we left. Uh, when you say with us, on your aircraft carrier? On our aircraft carrier. They, uh, we slept at the nighttime and they slept in our bunks in the daytime. <laughs> How many of them were there? Well, they must have been. The, at least 800 of them. All right. Yeah. So then you... Oh, they only got two meals a day. We got three. The crew got three, but the passengers only got two. Were they resentful of that? Huh? Were they resentful of that? Well, probably were, but that's the way it was. <laughs> okay. How long did it take you to get to Pearl? Uh, five or six days. And uh, wh where did you go in Pearl Harbor? We had to... Uh, Pull up at Fort, where they call Fort Island. All right. What, had that had that area been repaired since the yes, attack? Yes. Uh, were there any remnants of any of the uh, ships, the yes. battleships? Yes. The Oklahoma was still sunk, and the Arizona was sunk, and the Utah was still sunk, and uh, several of the others had been sunk. And c could you see? Any of those battleships still sticking out of the water? No. They were all you below the water. Oil. You could see an oil slick, but you couldn't see any of the craft. All right. Um, so how long were you at Pearl then? We was at Pearl from, uh, we got there in uh, September, and our first uh, encounter with the Japanese was uh, in October the 6th. Where was that? We went to Wake Island. Is that where you were assigned to go? That's where we were assigned to go. And what was the purpose of going to Wake Island? To uh, soften up the Japanese, because they were, they had all the uh, islands between Hawaii and J Tokyo, and they used them for uh, mostly for supply places. Well, did they still have Midway? Still had Midway, yes, Guam. All right, so uh, how long did it take you to get from Pearl over to the area where you had your first encounter near Wake? Probably four days, three or four days. Did you have, did you have any submarine warnings uh, during that period of time? No, none, none at all. all right. So what kind of an encounter did you have there at Wake? We uh, bombed, the, bombed the, the island structures. 
and uh, they sent up what they what they call a Betty, which is a, a, a torpedo bomber, and we were encountered some of those. All right. And uh, I think the Lexington got hit by one of them. You got hit by one of the, the Lexington and the carrier Lexington did. All right. How about your ship? Our oh, didn't. We had no damage. <laughs> we didn't get any. Uh, what, was the Lexington still uh, yes, in it, operation? Yes. Yes. It wasn't. Didn't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, were there any dog fights between your uh, Hellcats and the Bettys? Uh, I don't know what it's hell. I don't think you could call them that because these uh, Bettys were, they would fly close to the water to keep from being picked up by radar. Okay. They'd fly under the radar and you, you wouldn't encounter them until you almost run right upon them. So uh, the, 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 the fighters would shoot them down if they spotted them. Yeah. But that's about the way it was. Well, uh, did there your, were very few zeros. Did your uh, aircraft carrier shoot down any Bettys coming? Uh, no, not at that time, no. Uh, did no. you see other ships shooting Bettys down? Yes, yes. What other ships besides your carrier were in the uh, oh, fleet? See, we have a task, what they call a task force. And it usually consisted of uh, at least three carriers and uh, possibly two cruisers, maybe sometimes a battle wagon, not always, and then maybe uh, eight to ten destroyers, all in a pattern. All right. What other carrier was with you besides the Lexington and the, and the Calpins? I really don't remember that. Okay. I don't remember what that other one, third one was. There so, might have been only two, I don't know. I don't remember. So the bombing uh, was done by which aircraft of, of the uh, U.S.? Were they TBS? Were they TB bombing? Yes, they were bombers. All right. Uh, were they also torpedo planes? The same, way, same thing. Torpedo bear, yes. Uh, now, did the Japanese have uh, uh, any naval uh, ships? Around Wake? No, we didn't see any. We didn't encounter any any vessels at all at that time. How many days of assault did the Navy have on the island? Three days. It was there for three days. Uh, was that day and night or just daytime? Mostly at daytime. Mostly at daytime. <clears throat> Very seen a little at nighttime. Did the fleet take any special precautions for safety or detectability at nighttime? Oh yes, everything uh, at the at dusk, all lights had to be turned out, and everything was dark. No lights at all. When you open a hatch, it was closed. It was also dark, and everything was dark, except the flight deck. If we like, we were uh, qualifying night pilots there for one uh, for a while when we got rammed by the destroyer. Well, tell me about uh, practicing night flights uh, and the lights on the deck. What There's lights on the deck. They're, they're uh, maybe about that long and straight in the air, and they, they shine like a fluorescent light. Were they, were they recessed in the Re Yes, recessed right into the deck. Now, what kind of a deck was it? Was it wooden or wood? Wood. Wooden at that time with prop, with prop jobs. Now I hear they're metal with, with the with jets. jets. How many uh, aircraft did you have uh, on your ship uh, there when you were at Wake? Oh, Plus yes. or minus? Yeah, we must have had about 30 some, I imagine. All right. Yeah. Uh, did you lose any from your aircraft no, carrier? No, didn't lose any, no. Uh, when the uh, Lexington got hit, did they lose any aircraft, do you know? I don't think so, no. If they did, I didn't hear any. So after, th after your three days assault at, at Wake Island, uh, was there a ground assault on the on No, the no, no ground assault, no. This was just a softening just up? Just a softening up, that's right. After your three days there, uh, well, by the way, how many hours were you on duty there during that assault? Well, see, so when you're uh, in, in the range of, uh, of being by, attacked by enemy, you would go to what they call general quarters. And you go there and stay until you get away from there. 
What, okay. what did you do during the, during the battle there at Wake? Well, my job was to be a op radar operator. And where I, were you located? Were you in the bridge or? No, we were in our uh, radar room. With, uh, with, uh, we had a, a, what they call a, a ground radio and sky radio, like, like you could uh, pick up uh, ships and things only about 30 miles away because of the curvature of the earth. Your, your beam goes straight out. And after the curvature of the earth, they're, they're below it. But an aircraft, it goes out that way. You get that anywhere around the 200 mile area. Okay. Um, how many other radar men were there on the uh, cow pens with you? Uh, so At we week. had four sections. Four sections of men, we had four sections to each group. How many and maybe there would be a, uh, uh, eight men, eight men to the section. And you had four sections. Four sections. So got 30, 32, 32 radar yeah, men. Right. And they'd done different jobs. <clears throat> you'd rotate and you'd, maybe you'd spend a half an hour on the scope because it had something to do with your eyes. They sought at that time anyhow. So you had to get a half an hour on the scope and you'd move to another job like mounting the earphones, like going to, uh, going to uh, the plotting table or the big, uh, big plexiglass table, or well, like not a table, but a big board, round board. Vertical board <clears throat> mounted on the wall? Right in the center of the room. Okay. And you'd have phones and you'd sit back there and you was in contact with the operator. And he would call you in the range and the bearing and uh, the distance. And you'd mark it on that board right. for, the, for your offers in front of you to see all that. But you had to write it backwards for them to see it. <laughs> that took a talent. It took a, little, it took a little time to get through that, yes. Uh, and there'd be two of you back there. Well, dur during the, 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 the engagement there at, at Wake Island, uh, were you on general quarters? Yes. At any time you're in, in engaging the enemy, you're at general quarters. So how many hours were you actually in the You'd radar? You'd stay there until, uh, uh, until, you, until you moved away from, from being direct hit by the, by the enemy. So you're there for three days. Are you in that radar? No, room? no, no. You'd, at nighttime, you move back out. Okay. And then maybe the next day you'd go back in again. Okay. Where did you go then after the, the engagement was broken off there at Wake? Went back to Pearl Harbor. How long were you at Pearl? Well, let's see. It, if you had any uh, repairs or anything to do, you might be there um, maybe a week because they had another plan, you're going to go somewhere else. Uh, but after uh, Wake Island, we invaded uh, the Gilberts and the Marshall Islands, which was just maybe a week or two after that. All right. Which did you go to first, the Gilberts or the Marshall? I believe it was the Gilberts Islands first. And what did you do there? Same thing as you do all the rest of them, just uh, bomb them. And, and uh, the, the only thing is you had the battle wagons first. They would go there and they'd try to level the place off by with the big guns. All right. And uh, before, the, before any of our men went in. So uh, on the Gilberts, was there, was there a ground assault then at the Gilberts? Yes, yeah, uh, on both it and the Marshall. Okay. Uh, how, long, how long was there any uh, bombardment of the island before the men were sent ashore? About, about, about a day. Yeah. What were your duties during that period of time? Uh, For spotting enemy aircraft that had come from the islands. Uh, were, were there a lot at that time? There was quite a few, yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Were, were these zeros? They were zeros and, and bombers, both. Did, your, did any bombers get through? No, not at that time. What kind of armament did your aircraft carrier have for defense, we had uh, they first built the <coughs> first 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 one they built. They put a, a three-inch gun mount on the, <coughs> by the island structure, but it was too much and it warped the deck. So they done away with that one. 
and on the rest of them, then they just put. We had uh, one, two, we had a 40 millimeter on the forecastle. That's on the rear end. One on the one on the forecastle and one on the tail end. That's two. And I think we had two on each side of the port side and the uh, starboard side. That right down alongside the ship. Yes. It was 40 millimeters. And then we had uh, ton gun turrets besides that for 20 millimeters. And that's about what we, all we had. Okay. Yeah. So along the sides, you had the 40 millimeters and the 20 millimeters. Yeah, 40s and the 20. I mean, we also had 40s on the front and the back, on the tail end and the front end. Do you have any idea how many rounds those guns could throw up at uh, approaching airplanes in a in a minute? Well, the 20 millimeters. I don't know how many shells was in there. It's in a round, round uh, tube like like this, maybe about that big around, and uh, it'd go around and. God, but how many in hell? I couldn't tell you. I don't okay. know. Okay. No. <clears throat> so, how many days were you engaged there at the Gilberts? I think it was just about a week we were there. And were you being attacked by zeros all that time? No, it was only the first few days. Um, did you see any of the zeros get shot down? No, I didn't. See any American planes get shot down? No, sir. Were, were all your planes able to come back to the Calpins? Yes, sir. Did you have to create reports from, from your job as a radar man? Do I? Did you have to create any reports, written reports or anything? Our officers did, the, the, the men didn't. They'd have to report to uh, our, uh, what they call the CIC, which was right next room, right next to ours. It's called the Combat Information Center. Okay. And they, they, had every, they knew everything that was going on because they were in, in charge. It was also in, uh, uh, in in, uh, in contact with the main man on the whole, the whole uh, task force. Okay. Uh, do you remember who was leading that task force there at the Well, right, we, had the, what, we had what they call two fleets. It was the same fleet all the time, it was just a different number by uh, command. And the third fleet was under Admiral Halsey. Bull Halsey? Bull Halsey. And the fifth fleet was under Spruance. Did you meet any of one of those guys? No, I never did see one of them. No. Uh, did they have a reputation on the on the aircraft carrier? Uh, uh, were yeah. they well respected or? Yeah, no? I think they were. Yeah, especially Halsey until until he got to the, to the typhoon area when he went and had the typhoon because he kind of got blamed for that. But uh, they had a they had a. A trial on him and found him not guilty, so he was all right. Who was the commander of your uh, Calpins uh, at, at Wake? A captain. Uh, we had uh, different ones. Our first one was Captain. Uh, uh, let's see what was his name? McConnell. Now, was he at Wake? Uh, he was uh, from the commissioning, clear through to Wake. Yes. All right. Then and we then, went to the Gilberts. Then we had Captain. Uh, Taylor, and another one, and he last, they last about uh, maybe six or eight months, they didn't they change hands. Why was that? I don't know what that was, I don't know, but that, just the way, that's the way they did it. How did you, <coughs> how did you like your captains when you were? Oh, on I, I like, yeah, I'm very well pleased with them. Did you have any close calls uh, there at the, at the Gilbert Islands? No, none of that, not at that time, no. All right, uh, so you're there about a week. Yeah. And then do you go on to the Marshalls from there? Yeah, they're, cause they're in a, pretty close in the same vicinity, not very far apart. So you went there directly? Yeah, right there, yeah. yeah. Was that, the same was time. That the same assignment to soften them up? Yes. And uh, soften them up for, uh, for a for invasion. shore assault? Yeah, for an invasion. How long were you at the uh, Marshalls? At the Marshalls, it was just about the same time as it was uh, at the Gilberts. And so they did, pretty well took them over pretty fast. Did you uh, encounter the same type of uh, 
enemy aircraft. Uh, Same thing, uh, yes, from uh, from them. Right now, did you suffer any plane losses from your cow no, pens? No. Your pilots were either great or lucky. You did good, very good, very good. Um, how did how did the the uh, TBS hold up in uh, operation? Was it pretty reliable? Very reliable, yes. yes. And, and the Hellcat was that reliable? Very reliable. We, uh, I can tell you, we'll tell you a story here about uh, when we hit Truck Island. That's another Japanese held island that was there, and uh, we had a uh, wasn't our pilot, but it was. In the, in, a, in a pilot out of the task force that got shot down in the lagoon there and, and on, the, on the island of truck. And a Jap destroyer was trying to pick him up. But we had a four fighter escort above him that was driving the, the destroyer away from him by strafing it. Okay. So they, uh, they talked to the task group commander and uh, they wanted to try to save that pilot. So he said, yes, we'll try it. So they, they took uh, one of the planes off, off of the, one of the cruisers, which is a, can land on water, which is called an OS-2U, and give him an, a four, a four, another four fighter escort, sent him in, he landed on the, in the lagoon, picked the pilot up, brought him back. So he, uh, did he have pontoons or did he have? Pontoons, yes. Okay. They had pontoons. All right. So the fighters were able to dispatch the, they, they, the Jap cruiser. Right. They, they held the cruiser off, I mean the destroyer off, destroyer. while he picked the pilot up. Um, had the pilot been shot down from ground fire or from an airplane? I think it was from ground fire. Was he from your ship? No, he was from one of the other carriers. Okay. How do you know about that? Just from well, you hear by, by, by working in CIC. Okay. You get all that information. That's one good thing about working in the, under NCA and CIC. You get all that information. If you was just a gunner or something, you don't you don't hear them things. You don't know what's going on. No, anywhere. no, it's all something else. What well, what would the what would the Navy do to replace a plane that had been shot down if they're out at sea? Now, what was that again? This fellow was shot down out at sea. Yeah. What would the Navy do to replace that aircraft? Oh, well, that's what your CVEs are for. When you move back, the CVEs come out from the States loaded with aircraft for replacements for those that have been shot down. Okay. By carriers that need them. Yes. Did you ever have any uh, wildcats on your, uh, on your cow pens? Or were they always Hellcats and TBS? We always had Hellcats. I think the Wildcats was what they called the F-4F. F. That's an earlier plane than the L-Cat. Okay. So, but we didn't have any of them. We did have the, uh, what they called the Dauntless Dive Bomber. Dauntless it's, Douglas? Yeah, the, the S, what they called the SVD. And we had that on the shakedown cruise. And the wings don't fold. So it took too much room and and, and cut down on the number of planes we could carry. So they took that squadron off, and we didn't, and done it. when we came back to Philadelphia, they done away with it. <clears throat> so you're there in the Marianas about a week, and uh, the- In the Marshalls. The Marshalls, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're, you're in the Gilberts, and then the Marshalls, and then where did you go? I'd have to look at that. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't remember exactly how that went, but we, we was all over the islands okay. of Japan, after Japan, between Japan and Tokyo. Where was truck located? Was that in an island group? Yeah, it's an island group. I don't know exactly. It was like, it was noted as the Japanese Pearl Harbor, is what they called it. Oh. That's how, that. The, most of the got most of their supplies and their ships that they had. They went there and they also got their supplies from the truck, been brought in from the homeland. Well, did you have any engagements there at truck? Yes, or, yes, yes. Your, yourself? Yes, yes. Uh, how, how long was that engagement? 
That's just a hit and run in a couple of days. We never did it in babe truck. Okay. No, we just soften it up, and go back and hit it ever so often. Was that, was that a, uh, an island where they had a uh, major aircraft, source of aircraft? Yes, yes. What's the next location that you remember going af after uh, the, the Marshalls? Well, I remember we went to uh, New Guinea. All right. We went down around Hollandia. And we what to, we what did you do in New Guinea? We saw for that place up too. That was another place, tight place where there was a kind of heavy on our troops that was already landed there. Okay. So we went in and softened them up. All right. And uh, so was that ground support for the for the military? If the ground support was already there. Yeah. Yes. Um, New Guinea was uh, just uh, just above uh, Australia, wasn't That's it? That's right. Yes. Yes. Uh, there, were there any Japanese on Australia yet at that no, time? No. No. But they were pretty heavy on New Guinea, weren't they? Yes. Yes, they were. Uh, <clears throat> What, what uh, accomplishments did, uh, did the Navy have there in New Guinea, well, your, your task force? In New Guinea, we, we had what they call the calm. We had a calm. That's the first time in my, in my life I ever seen an ocean without one ripple on it, just, just like a piece of glass. And so what effect did that have on the ship? Well, you could, like I told you before, you've got to have at least 25 knots of wind across yeah. the deck before you can launch aircraft. And we couldn't get up enough speed to launch aircraft, so we couldn't launch. What was your maximum speed for your cruise for your aircraft? About thirty, carrier? about thirty-two knots. All right, but at your speed of thirty-two knots didn't create didn't, enough didn't bring airflow. Up enough, no. So how long were you in this calm? So we, we didn't launch aircraft. So the, <clears throat> so we just uh, waited until it didn't kind of break. And then we went back in. Was, was this hours or days? This was days, a couple days. Yeah. It was just like, I'm telling you, just like this floor. It wasn't, it wasn't a ripple, no place. I'd never seen it like that before. So what was happening on your, in your radar duties? Are you still trying to pick up aircraft? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, everything went on just like it had, everything did before, but you just didn't... Uh, Launch aircraft. Were the Japanese attacking the, no. the task force? No, no, they wasn't. It, it, it didn't at that time, for some reason or other. How about the Navy? Did the, did the na any Japanese naval ships uh, encounter you? No, we didn't encounter any naval naval ships there. Did in you? fact, we, <clears throat> in fact, we, our, our task group never did encounter another task group, a Japanese task group. Our aircraft did. They would take off from here, like you know, off the coast of the Philippines. The Japanese fleet was trying to get away, and we had, they countered it. So they lost all aircraft from all all the carriers, but there was they had just very little time over the target because it was the, the distance. Some of them didn't even make it back. They landed in the ocean and were picked up by oh. by our ships. But they did go and got the, get the damage done to the Japanese. All right. When, when was that in relation to the Battle of Lady Gulf? Oh, that was before that. that was, was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that may be a couple, three, three months before that. Before that. Were, you, were you involved at all in Lady yes. Gulf? Yes. What, what did your ship do during the Battle of Lady Support, Gulf? Supported the troops with aircraft. Supported the troops landing. Uh, did you have any encounters with uh, the Japanese planes there? Yes, the planes, yes, yes. And ships? Yeah, no ships. Did, did you ever have any encounters on any of uh, your uh, experiences there in the Pacific with Japanese submarines? No, not really. We might thought we spotted some, but we wouldn't, it couldn't be, it couldn't be positive. Did you tell me that uh, you had one incident where the Japanese torpedo plane uh, dropped one on you that was a near miss? Yes, we had one, one near miss on us, yes. Uh, where, where was that? That was in, uh, I believe that was off of, uh, around, uh, uh, I believe that was off of the coast of the Philippines. Yeah, 
did, were you below deck then? No, anytime you're getting pretty close to, uh, anytime you get pretty close to uh, enemy, you, you're at your general quarters most of the time. All right. They call that early. You get up there early before you ever get to the. Um, how, do you know how close that torpedo came to hitting the ship? Anybody well, tell you? I can you? only tell by what they, some what I've been told. Maybe. Uh, 50 yards, 100 yards? Yeah, maybe so, like something like that, yeah. Yeah, enough to, enough to jar the ship, I know that. It okay. jarred the ship. That was that a torpedo or a bomb? That was a bomb. Bomb? Yes. Uh, did the plane get away that it had dropped the bomb? No, he went right on in the water. Because <laughs> of the kamikaze sea. Was he? Yes. How many times did you encounter attacks by kamikazes? Well, see, I... A couple of times I went up on the flight deck when, when we were, had kamikaze, and you could see them way up there. And you could see the five inch shells that they're shooting at them, but they're exploding underneath them. They was above them yet, until they get your beat on you, and then here they come. Well, how, how high would the, would the shells reach? Oh, gee, well, I guess maybe 10,000 10, feet, maybe. Really? Yeah. Especially those five-inch shells. And so the, the uh, Jap kamikazes would be hanging up yeah, there. Yeah, you can see the shells float underneath them, then right up above it. Well, did you, were you able to pick them up on radar? Oh, yes. So you knew they are coming? Yes. Yeah. Well, how did you feel about that? <laughs> I didn't like it, but there's nothing I can do about it. Well, seriously, what, how did you feel? Oh, well, I was just hoping we didn't get hit, so. Now, uh, when you're in the radar room, uh, did you have to wear safety equipment, life preservers oh, you and were, all? You were, you were, any time you're at sea, you have to wear your life jacket. I don't care whether you're just out 100 yards out or however, you, as soon as you go to sea, you put your jacket on. Okay. And they also give us a, well, they did at first, but later on they give us a, uh, with your dog tag, they have to give you a whistle. Okay. Because uh, if, you, if you fall over, if you have to get knocked off of the sea, or fall over the sea, they couldn't hear you by shouting. Right. But they might be able to hear you if you had that whistle. Whistle. So everybody got a whistle. Okay. And they're bringing around their neck. Did you have any personal near experiences? Yeah, well, we had some, some accidents. We had, uh, I don't know exactly where it was at, but we had a, uh, we got a call from one of the ships that uh, their deck was fouled and a plane was coming in. They, didn't, they couldn't take him aboard because of the deck was messed up. So they, they told us to take him aboard because he's low on fuel. He's either going in to drink or he's going to come aboard. So he came aboard and uh, he came on all right, but he, he must have been high and, and bounced. And when he bounced on the flight deck, he landed over in a gun mount oh. where we were at general quarters that time. And when the Marines, <clears throat> we had a detachment of Marines on board and they were, uh, Battle station was one of the gun mounts, 20 millimeter. He landed in that gun mount and cut three of the Marines' heads off. Oh, gee. So that's that's the worst one we've ever had. That's that's our worst one. So did, we did buried the, him at sea. Did the pilot survive that? Yes, he did survive that. Yes. What happened to the plane? Did it get thrown overboard? Yes, it just went on overboard. Yeah. But I guess. I think he was landing on something a lot smaller than what he had come off of, because mm -hmm. he comes off one of the bigger carriers, and ours is smaller. Yeah. Uh, I just imagined to myself, it, it has to make a difference to you. Yeah. I think so, anyhow. So did you ever learn what was the matter with the flight deck of the bigger carrier? No, I never did feel that what was, what was wrong with it. It had a wreck on it, probably was whatever, probably what it was. It had a wreck on it and couldn't take him aboard. 
Is that the only wreck you had on your carrier? Was that the... No, we had another one come in and he landed in the same thing, landed in the <clears throat> gun mount, only he had, uh, he had his arm out <clears throat> and his canopy was the only thing that was holding him from falling over. So before they could get him out, they went and someone, someone gave him the word to break the canopy, see if that could help him. Well, as soon as they done that, the plane fell on over and his arm fell down in the, in the gun mount, but he survived. So did just his arm? He just lost his arm, yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. <clears throat> so you just had the two accidents? Yeah, just the two. Well, we had no, we, during that typhoon, our air, we had a, our air group commander. Uh, I showed you on that plug there where, where the, where's it was all been over there and that reliant was going down there. Shit. Right. Well, that's only, at that time it wasn't so bad, but then it got, so you couldn't see anything, but, but you could follow that line down. So we, had, we thought we had a, one of the uh, planes that caught fire. Okay. All right. Uh, who was the fellow that you were telling us about? Our that? group commander. He had uh, he had been shot down earlier on, and uh, off the coast of the Philippines, and would uh, spent he spent eleven days on the water with a pint of water, and was picked up by one of our submarines. He and was he was he was shot down out of his plane. And he's in the water for eleven days. Eleven yeah. days. Yes, and they finally one of our own submarines picked him up and took him back to Pearl Harbor, and he come back aboard our ship as our air group commander then. And then he was the one that was going down to the flight deck to see about uh, one of the planes on fire on the tail end had caught fire during that typhoon. Well, how did he last 11 days in the water? And it was life raft. He had life raft on his plane. Did he have any food or? No food, it was just a pint of water. That's all he had. Well, I, I want to show some of these photos, if we could, uh, Don. Okay. Um, and there's some of your uh, carrier and uh, what we were talking about. What's that photo? Uh -huh. What is that a photo of? Oh, that's a... Uh, this is going to have a little bit more. That's a tour of TBF coming in for a landing. On, on your carrier? On our carrier, yes. How long was your uh, runway? 608 feet long. And what was the big aircraft carrier's length? Oh, I imagine they go uh, maybe close to 1,500, maybe a little bit more. Show us what, a, what that's a picture of. That's just those, uh, just at sea, just to see how it sees all. Not, not, that's your Calpins. Yeah, that's okay. the Calpins. See up here. Yep. Now, are all the planes on deck in that photo, or are there some stored below? There's some stored below. Yes. 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 And what is that a photo of? That's just how they storm when, when, when you're not when you're not flying. Is that a photo from your flight deck? Yeah, from my flight right. deck. And is that this photo is, take? This, this is the front of the ship, and you flow this way. This is the forward elevator here. Okay, well, we'll show the camera. What, where's the forward elevator? Right here. All right. And this is the bow of the ship? Yeah, this is the bow of the ship. And what are, what are these three mounts? It was, uh, uh, 
Gun turrets. Gun turrets. Mm -hmm. And the large one? The, the that's, large the four, one? that's the 40 millimeter. And these are other 20s up here. Okay. So. Now, you, you uh, were talking about uh, the fellows hanging on to the rope. Uh, yeah. What, what was, was that a typhoon? Yes. And typhoon. where were you? In Off that? the coast of the Philippines. Right. On December the 18th, 1944. Did you know that was coming? Uh, yes, but uh, Admiral Halsey didn't think it was going to be that much trouble. Take a look at that and then show see this the camera. Line, see, show this, the camera. see this line going through here? Just, well, sh show the camera. Oh. See these posts? Right here there's a line that goes across there going back to the after part of the ship. We had 16 lines, rope lines, and two steel cables on each plane tied to the flight deck. And it broke them like nobody's business. Blew them off? Yeah. All right. We lost about 70% uh, of our airplanes. And uh, what was the maximum, uh, oh, what do you call degree it? Degree of roll? R yeah. We rolled 45 degrees and we were supposed to capsize at 38. What kept you from capsizing? Well, see the overhang of the flight deck that fits way out over here? As it rolled, water caught up underneath there, pushed it back up. And what happened to the, uh, to the fellow that uh, was... Never found him. He was washed off? And he was the same guy that spent 11 days on water. Same fella, Mr. Uh, uh, see, I can't even think of his name now. The Japanese couldn't get him, but the weather no, could. Yeah, the weather got him, yeah. Commander Price, that was his name. Do you know his first name? Oh, gee, I did, but I can't think of it now. Now, tell us what that is. Is that the aft part of the flight deck? Yeah, that's the after part of the flight deck. Now, with those aircraft on the flight deck in that position, how much flight deck did they have for a takeoff? Well, let's see where that one I had just a minute ago here. Where that photo I showed that. Let's see. I think it's this one. No, nope, that ain't it. I want to show the elevator, where, where the elevator was. Here it is. Okay. See this plane right here? Oh, show the camera. See this plane right here? Yeah. It's on a catapult. And that catapults it off, swooshes it right off. Okay. Is you don't fly. You rev the engine up, get as high as it'll go. And then it's got cables on it from the flight deck up to the plane, and it takes him off. Uh, is that the way all of them? were launched? No, no, it's just some of them taxi off, but when they're crowded like that, that's the only way you can get them off. You can't pull them. Now those, those planes in that photograph with the, with the wings uh, uh, bent, are those your Hellcats? Yes, yes. That's what they are. Uh, Here's another photo. Take a look at that, and then show the camera. Now this and is tell a, this is a, this is taken back at Pearl Harbor after the after the accident. And this uh, destroyer here is one we got rammed by, and uh, it just put it on a 45 degree angle, and lost. Uh, I think it said two men. Uh, where did that ramming take place? Let's see, uh, I'll show you here. In the ocean, where did it? Oh, right outside of Pearl Harbor, right out of Long Hawaiian Islands. And he hit us about right back in here. Show the camera. Oh, about, he hit us about right back in here. You see that right? Yeah, right back here on this side. And did it injure any uh, people on your ship? Not on our ship, but uh, flooded a couple compartments. On your ship? On our ship, but killed the two men on the other, on the destroyer. Yeah. So how far from Pearl were you? Oh, maybe miles or days. Maybe four or five hundred miles. 
It was just, we qualify on night, night, night pilots for, 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 for landings when it happened. Okay. Yeah. So that, was that before any engagement with the Japanese? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This was in, just in uh, qualifying pilots for night landings. What other uh, battle engagements do you <laughs> remember? You, you were uh, off of New Guinea and you said uh, the Philippines? Philippines, yeah, the Philippine Sea. And uh, wh where else? Well, let's see. Did you get up towards Japan? Well, yeah, we hit Tokyo, the first, uh, first, first uh, carrier base planes on Tokyo. That was in February of uh, 45, or 45. Okay. So you sent aircraft to yes. bomb Tokyo? Yeah, we, yes, yes. And we also would uh, send up planes to escort the B-29s that was flying over Tokyo because it's coming from, from Guam. Uh, the U.S. had kept, or the Allies had captured Guam. Yeah, because we'd got back, we'd got Guam back. And that was the primary base for the B-29s? Yes, yeah. Is that where the B-29s flew for the atom bomb? Yes. How, the, how many uh, raids were made uh, off your aircraft carrier over to Tokyo, if you remember? Oh, gee. We must have made four or five runs, four or five different ones, yeah. Okay. Before the, before the IE bomb, I so yeah. So I've, I've read and heard about the, the incendiary uh, attacks on, on Tokyo. Uh, yeah. were, that, were those the B-29s or were those B-29s, other... yes. All right. Yeah. So what did the fighter planes do? Did they just... Just uh, escorted in protect, protection for the, for the B-29s. In case the Zeros got up, they'd take care of them before they hit the... Were, were there any... Tales or rumors about Japanese trying to not intercept? Not that I know of, not that I know of. They were pretty well decimated yeah. by that time. Yeah. Uh, did you have any fighter bombers off your, did the uh, TBS, did they uh, do any bombing of Tokyo? Oh yes, did yes, they? yes. Before the B-29s got the there. Before the 29s Yes. And uh, the Kalpins was the first carrier in the Tokyo Bay during the signing of the treaty. Well, it was. Yes. And our planes were the first to land on Japanese soil. Okay. Uh, did you know that the B-29s were going to be carrying atom bombs to, to Japan? No, I didn't. Because uh, I had a friend, when we, when, when we, uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, and, and right after our Tokyo raid, and back in March, uh, we got uh, notice that we were going to go back to the States for repair, for overhaul, because we had been out there two years. And uh, so we went back to San Francisco, to back to Mare Island, that's right outside of San Francisco. And while I was there, uh, the Indianapolis. Got sunk? No, it was oh. there. Okay. So uh, I had a friend that I went in the Navy with that was on the Indianapolis. So I went over to, from, uh, let's see, what's the name of that place I was at? It was a, it was a receiving station right outside of San Francisco. Uh, and I was there and I thought, well, I'll go over and see him while, uh, while I'm here. So I did, I went over and went aboard the Indianapolis while he was in Mare Island, talked to him and uh, he couldn't get liberty, he said, because they were pulled up alongside the Chester and they got in a fight with him was throwing, throwing uh, chipping hammers at each other. <laughs> what was the Chester? Another cruiser, they were tied up alongside each other and for repair and they got into fight with each other, started throwing the old chipping hammers and they just got, uh, got, they couldn't go ashore, so. So, so I got the, at, at, at that time I, I went to visit him, but I didn't have any idea, or he didn't, nobody else did, that they was going to take the atomic bomb, the atomic bomb to Guam. Hmm. 
but he survived. Good. Yeah, he survived it. He spent uh, I don't know how many days out on the water. Well, Brian, Brian uh, has uh, interviewed a fellow that was in the water for four days. Well, for the Indianapolis? Yeah. Yeah. They were getting eaten by sharks. And, yeah, same way with him. Uh, is he still living? No, he's passed away since then, yeah. Right. But he survived that. Uh, so, uh, where were you when the at first atom bomb was dropped? I was uh, on my way from uh, 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 Pearl Harbor, was, I see, after I got, come back to Mare Island on the Calpins, I got transferred off of that ship. Okay. And I got to, I went back to uh, that base there in California. And they sent me to uh, San Pedro, California, San Pedro, California, Terminal Island, California, where I caught an LCI. Was, LCI for the, somebody watching this is what? Yeah, for what a landing craft infantry. Okay. And I boarded that, and it was supposed to be a radar bomb on it, but it was being transferred, it was one of the old square cons that had been over in Europe. They brought it here and was going to get ready for the Japanese Invasion. invasion. So they was redoing it, building, it, making another one out of it, a bigger one out of it. And I went aboard it. It was the only radar on board, and it didn't have any radar on it. But they still kept me on there, and I, all I done was just I just stared the helm every now and then for every four hours, and that's it. So when we got to Pearl Harbor, they transferred me from, to another one. Another and, LCI, and, or another LCI that had radar on it, then this one did. So we left Pearl Harbor and went to Guam. What was the maximum speed of the LCI? About eight mile, eight mile, eight knots an hour. Eight knots. Takes you all day. Well, how long did it take you to get to Guam from 40 Pearl? days. 40 days? 40 days. When we left Guam, when we left into San Diego, I asked the guy that uh, takes care of all that. I said, I guess we're pretty close to Pearl now. We Said no, we're about 500 miles off from San Diego. <laughs> That'd been a week. Eight, eight knots an hour. That's the reason you always had what they call. Uh, they had taken it be an LST that they called it an ARL, which for is a repair ship, and they always got one in tow as, as you're going along for oh. something something wrong with them. They had these big Chrysler engines, diesel engines. 40 days must have driven you crazy. Well, that's a long, long haul, I'll tell you that. But well, we stopped at Pearl, and then we went on to Guam, and that whole time, 40 days. Now from Guam, where did you go? We went to uh, Samar, over in the Philippines. How did you get there? On that LCI, aboard the LCI. Now how long did that take? Uh, it took another 20 days. And what did you do in the Philippines? We were going to uh, transport the Philippine people that had been uh, th thrown off of their island by the Japanese, taking them back and forth till they got ready to go to Japan. But then, in the meantime, a bomb had been dropped, and I got off of there and come back to the States and got discharged. Were, so you weren't on the cow fence when it was in Tokyo Bay? Mm -hmm. No, no, I wasn't on it then, right. no, no, uh, no. How did you learn that the first bomb had been dropped? Let's see, where was I at? I believe I was in Pearl Harbor when that happened. Was that radio or yeah. scuttlebutt yeah, or yeah, what? Yeah, radio, yeah. And what, what was your reaction to the first bomb? Well, I th maybe this thing's going to be over with. Look at the, the lives we're going to save. But I have to go into Japan. And how about the second bomb? Where were you? Still in same Pearl? Same place, yeah, same place. Uh, what did you think about that one? I think maybe it's just things is going to be over with pretty soon. And uh, so were you still in Pearl when you heard that the Japanese had surrendered? Yes, I think so. I believe so. I believe you're right. right. So where did you go from Pearl? We went to Guam. And then Guam over to Samar and uh, yeah, but the when you were in Guam and Samar, the bomb had already been dropped. 
I believe it had, I'm not sure, but I think so. Uh, where'd you go from Samar? I caught the uh, uh, APH, and I talked hospital ship back to San Francisco, All right. coming home. And when were you discharged? January the 9th in 46. So you were, you were in there almost four years. Yeah, I see, from October 42 till January the 9th, 46. 46, so it's about three years and three months, mm -hmm. Yeah, something months. like that. Yeah. How, how did you get home from uh, the West Coast? A train. That was a long ride, too. Not as long as 40 days, though. No, no, not that, quite that long, no, no, <laughs> no. So and I got sent back to discharge in Toledo, Ohio. All right. And then how did you get from Toledo to uh, Middle Middletown? Down. Same way, train. train, yeah. So uh, w when did you see Margaret? See who? <laughs> not Margaret, I'm, t I'm thinking of Larry's wife, Martha. Uh, Frida, Frida's your wife. Oh, I'm at her. Well, when did you see after, Frida? After I was discharged, and uh, I wasn't doing too much. I went down to a bar in Middle down there called Sons Bar and Grill on Broad Street, right across from the uh, right across from where the fire station is. All right. And I got up. I was sitting there on the bar stool. There's about four or five ladies in a table sitting there next to me. I felt somebody pull on my shirt tail. So, uh, on my coat rather, and I looked around and I said, what do you need? She asked me if I was certain, if I was arranged to a certain guy. I said, yeah, he's my brother. I said, so what? And that was it. Then two years later, <laughs> Met her again and be married. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, what did what kind of work did you do when you came to Middletown from from uh, being uh, discharged up in Toledo? I went to the paper mill out to uh, Gardner Richardson on Charles Street. Okay, what did you do at the paper mill? I uh, worked in a carton plant. You know how they make uh, cartons, and it it'd be embedded in these sheets. You'd have to take a hammer and knock all the edges off of them. Okay. And I'd done that for about uh, two or three months. I, this ain't for me. So I asked to be traded. So they sent me down to uh, uh, their place on Central Avenue by the, uh, as you go towards the hospital town. Okay. Right there. And they put me in a skid shop there, making skids. Didn't like that either. I quit. So I quit and uh, I went to uh, the Aronka. Went to where? The Aronka. Aronka, that, they made airplanes. Didn't yes, they? They, made air, they did at that time, yes. yes. So I worked there for about uh, oh, six months. How long was it between jobs, between, between making Well, you could go one, one job right to another in them days. It was no problem getting a job. But weren't there a lot of veterans uh, looking for work, though? Not at that time, there wasn't too many coming out. That was pretty early yet. Okay. Yeah, so I, I had no problem getting a job. So I went to Ronka and got a job and working in a wood shop. And then they slowed down. They said, well, I thought I was working day shift. They said, you're going to have to go and work in the night shift, the 3 to 11. I said, no, nah, I don't want that. So I went to Raymond Bay, got another job right there. Where did you go? The Raymond Bag. Raymond Bag? Yeah. Now, you're still single at this time. Oh, yeah, still single. Didn't so make no difference. You didn't care where you worked? Or no, I had to, had to sow some wild oats anyhow. So I got the job there. How long were you at the bag company? Huh? How long were you at the bag company? At the bag company? I uh, see, about three or four months. What'd you do there? Uh, worked off of tubers, where they made b bags, big uh, paper bag? Yeah, manila bags. Okay. A lot of big roll of paper would come from Sorg. They get and then line up and go through this machine. I'd catch it and it comes off. And uh, so I worked there for about three or four months. So is this a day job? 
Got a day job, yeah. So I quit there. I went to uh, Miami Cabinet. Were you just trying to build up a resume, <laughs> or what were you doing? I, I don't know. I was, I was, wasn't very, uh, okay. very, very, but very reliable at that time. I'll tell you. So I went there, and and uh, I was working on uh, making uh, uh, medicine cabinets. So uh, I worked there a while, and I went up. And the guy I worked with me, I'd done better than he did, and he was making a nickel more than me. So I went up and asked the boss. I said, How can, "Can I get another? Can I get a raise, same as he does? I do more cabinets than he does." He said, "No." I said, "I quit." So I quit and went to Armco. All right. And I worked there. For, I worked there for about oh, a year and a half. Well, how old were you when you started at Armco? Let's see, Armco, 46. 20, 20 years old. So I uh, went to Armco and I worked there. And one, one Sunday night, I was supposed to go in Sunday night and, at midnight and work. And I ran into some guys downtown and they said, oh, you don't want to go in tonight. I thought, I'll call in. So I called in sick. And uh, I stayed sick for three months. Did they fire you in that no, interim? No, wait, 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 wait a minute. So one of my bosses come in and in the meantime, I got a bartender job across the street there over at Godwin's. So he come in there and I, he said, where you been? I said, I just report off, never did go back. But I'd like to get back. He said, well, let me go talk to the personnel office and see. So uh, he did and he come back and said, they, they want you, you go out and see him tomorrow. So I did, I went back out and he said, uh, where have you been? I made a big, big line of lie, told him. I said, oh, I went to Colorado got uh, loaded out there and couldn't make it back. He said, okay, well, we're gonna give you your job back, but you're gonna lose all your, uh, you're gonna lose all your- uh, Seniority? Company said no. You're gonna lose all your job seniority, but we'll give you your company seniority back, which wasn't very much. I said, fine, I'll take it. So then I, I straightened myself up, been there ever since. <laughs> Did getting married help straighten you up? Oh some? yeah, yeah. After I got married, yeah, that straightened me up because I had children to take care of. Yeah, I couldn't do that no more. Did you work days at uh, Armco? Uh, yeah, Did you no, work days? shift work. Shift work. Shift work. Now, I've talked to other guys. So you, well, one week or so, you'd be working nights and then days and then yeah, second you'd work, you'd work day turn, and you'd work three to eleven, and you'd work eleven to seven. How did your body adjust to anything like that? It's hard, it's hard over years. It's, yeah, you, you can't, your sleep pattern's all messed up and it's, it's hard. But I, I made it through it. So I worked there 34 years and then quit and retired. Now so, I've been retired 38 years. Let me get back to your military a minute. What, uh, what, was, your, what was your progression of ranks? I started out as an inter apprentice from Great Lakes, and then after I got out of boot camp, you automatically become a seaman second class, and then you have to take an examination for seaman first class, then you have to take an examination for third class petty officer, and you take another examination for second class petty officer, and a second examination for first class, and I. Took the examination, yeah, yeah. You got to take a test each time, and then it's submitted to the somewhere in in the the Navy. I don't know where it goes to. They all they see it and check it all out, and then they get back to you whether you obeyed or not. And it's all uh, fleet competition, so the whole fleet does the same thing. And if you're in, if, it, if there's it's available for you, you get it. So I made what? first class. Petty officer first class yes. was your highest rank? As the highest I've ever made, yeah. How about uh, any commendations or medals that you, you got? Commendations, I see I got the, got the Good Conduct Medal. 
I got the uh, are, those, are those on your hat? Uh, no, no. All right. No. no. I got the uh, Good Conduct Medal, and then I got the uh, Asiatic Pacific uh, Theater okay. with uh, with uh, two silvers and one bronze star, and one silver is equal to five battles, so that make eleven eleven battle stars. And then I got the uh, American Theater with no stars. And then I got the Philippine Liberation with one star. And I got the Navy uh, Commendation Award. And also got the Philippine uh, Presidential Citation. Navy Unit Commendation, did you mention that? The watch one? Navy unit yes, commendation. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the bronze star for? Battle stars. Each one is represent one battle star. Okay. And when the ship is uh, when the ship is given uh, a battle a bronze star, all the personnel on it gives the same thing. All right. Uh, yeah. So they all get it. Doesn't make a difference if you're a gunner, a radio man, or a chef. Whatever you all get it. Whatever you are, as long as you're part of ship's company. You get it. You're entitled to it. So what uh, did you do? Um, you, you were in. You when were I went in, to Korea. You were in the Korean War. Yeah. Well, I had uh, after uh, in '46. After I'd been out a while. I met a couple of guys that was in the Navy. They said, let's join the reserves. I thought, well, that might be a good thing. I might go get retirement out of it. If I could spend 20 years in the reserves, and you only had to do uh, one uh, two-week cruise a year, that might be all right. So I did that for uh, going on four years. I had one month to do, and I was in October 50. And uh, in September, I got a call from the Navy saying, we need you back. And uh, we're going to give you an extra year to go with it. But I didn't sign for that one. But Mr. Truman gave me one anyhow. So I spent 13 more months. I got called back in. But where, I didn't go anywhere. Where did you serve that time? Fill it back to, went back to Philadelphia and put those two CVEs in, out of mothballs back into service. What, what was your duty? On radar to get the radar situation started. Did you do any training of radar men? No, no. no. You were just putting the equipment back just, in yeah, service. Yeah, just getting it started up. Yeah. All right. And you spent 13 months before you were discharged from. Yeah, there? from October till November of the next year. All right. And when you uh, uh, when you were discharged, uh, you, you go back to uh, Armco. Went back to Armco, yeah, my time went right on. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brian, you have some more questions? I have two questions. Oh. Okay. Uh, so why the Navy? I think you enlisted into the Navy. Was there a reason why the Navy? Yeah, I had a brother that belonged in the Navy. He went in the Navy before me. I think he went back in. He went in in 32, got out in 36. And I kind of uh, seen how he liked it. and. Uh, yeah, I, that's what that enticed me to go in. Was, you, was it what you thought it was going to be once you got there in the Navy? Yeah, just about, yeah, yeah, just about, yeah. And you mentioned that you, you bumped into your future wife and then you ran into her two <laughs> years later, but you didn't tell us what happened two years later. How did you guys eventually become a couple? Well, with that story. Uh, <laughs> after, I met, after I met her, I went to the mill and and uh, I happened to work in the same department her brother was working in. So uh, uh, but two years later, I ran into him in a bar downtown, and she came in. Then he was getting ready to go to Newport, Kentucky to do some gambling. 
So he, we introduced, like we introduced ourselves again. And he said, uh, here, $10. He said, uh, take my uh, sister out and treat her. I said, sure, yeah, yeah, give me the $10. Huh? <laughs> so, so we went out and enjoyed ourselves that evening. Done it again and again, and first thing you know, well, that, that's what happened. Do you rem did you remember, recognize each other from two years before? Oh yeah, yeah, I knew who she was, yeah, before, yeah. And how long was it before you, how long time went when you guys met the second time to you when you got married? Let's see, about, it was about three or four months. Oh, that quick? Yeah, yeah, pretty quick, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's any other question I had. Uh, made me think, were you able to communicate with your parents at all while you were at sea? Uh, yeah, but uh, all my mail was censored. I'm sure it was. Yeah, it was all censored. I couldn't say uh, where I was at or what I was doing or just hello and are you everything all right at home, things but, like that. At least they knew you were alive. Yeah, yeah, that's and, it, yeah. Uh, did they correspond with you? Yes. Uh, and we'd uh, get mail uh, from uh, when we would uh, 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 refuel uh, from tankers. Right. They would bring mail from wherever they went and got the fuel from, somewhere. From a, and they would give us mail and we'd send them over ice cream. <laughs> so that may be pretty nice. Yeah. 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 But we made our own ice cream. On ship? Board ship, yeah. Was, was that a special arrangement for, to make ice cream? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did every ship have ice cream? No, no, well, destroyers did you, didn't have it. How did you get one? Well, that, we, uh, it was coming in some kind of a powder form, and we had a regular ship service. And they, they made it. I don't know how they made it, but it wasn't bad. So, so we'd give a gallon or two of it to the people who brought our mail out. Yeah. Where did, you, where did your brother spend his four years in the Navy? He was on the, he was on the USS Pensacola uh, cruiser on the West Coast. All right. Yeah. All right. Have any more, Brian? Well, I want to thank you for giving us this interview and thank you for your service. Well, thank you very much. Wonderful meeting you. I appreciate it very much.